easiest 50 mark question you will ever see. You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for this one because there's gonna be a lot of learning lessons in one question. So we've got differential equations, dy by dx equals the root of y to the four minus y squared over x to the four minus x squared, where x and y are positive. When, x, when y is this, x is this, give your answer in the form y equals 2x over f of x. Now, with all differential equations, we wanna get, well, for normal maths anyway, A level further maths is very different. We're gonna get uh, all the y's on the left side, all the x's on the right side, and we can only do this through multiplication and division, okay? So, the first thing I always do is I multiply through by dx. I mean, multiply through by dx just to decide if we need to add any brackets on the right side. Here we don't, because they're being protected within the roots. But if I only get the y's on the left side, I'm gonna have to distribute those roots. So the first thing I have is dy by dx is the root of, and another thing I'm thinking about actually is, I can see y squared, x squared, the root of a square will cancel, but there's a couple of things we need to consider. So I'm gonna factorize out y squared first as well as well. I get this divided by root of x squared, x squared minus one. And I did say I was gonna times through by dx. So let's write that here. Make that look nice and pretty, mate. Now, if you just cancel that root with the y squared, technically you are incorrect. Let me give you guys an example. If I asked you to root minus one squared, is your initial thought that that's minus one? That is incorrect. Sorry, mate, not true. When you root anything squared, it actually takes the absolute value of that function or number, okay? So the root of negative one squared is the absolute value of minus one, which is one, okay? And to keep it simple, it's just to do a bid mass, okay? So you're technically doing minus one squared first, and then you're rooting it, okay? But we're not gonna get into the technicalities of that. Meaning, when I divide by this and apply the root, the y squared becomes modulus y, okay? So if I was to write it maybe just like this for now, you're gonna get the modulus of y root of y squared minus one divided by the modulus of x root x squared minus one dx, okay? But there's something very important that I have put in the question, which is that x and y are both positive. And we know that when we take the modulus of a positive number, it doesn't change the number. So we don't actually need that modulus anymore, but technically speaking, we should have put it there. So we're gonna divide by that. We're gonna get one over y, remember we don't need it anymore, root of y squared minus one dy is one over x root x squared minus one dx. And I guess the question is now, how do we integrate this thing? Okay, they're both the same, so maybe let's just focus on this one. All right, now, let's just look at a different example. Now, if you are doing your normal mass A level, most likely they'll maybe do this as like a part A, and then they would give you a substitution. The only way to do this is by a substitution, but most of us are used to integrating something like this, okay? And most of the time, or a lot of the time, especially in further maths, we need to recognize that integral. Again, in normal maths, they tell us what this is. But if you've not seen this a lot of times already, you've probably not done enough revision yet. We should always recognize this as being a trig substitution. And the substitution you'd make here is x equals sine u. Now you could do cos, but we usually do that when there's a negative. And the reason for that is cos squared plus sine squared is one. So when you rearrange, you get cos squared is one minus sine squared. You can see that follows this, okay? So you're just gonna make x equals sine, all right? So what happens then when we have this integral? Well, we don't actually use this identity. The reason for that is because it becomes a bit messy. You get 
cos squared minus one is minus sine squared. If you move that over, and then that uh, fits, sorry, this, yeah? Because that, for that reason, we don't use this one. Um, it's not as nice. But we do use one that involves some form of cos, and that one is the one that involves sec. Okay, sick mate. So we have the integral of one over x root x squared minus one dx. Now, what is that identity I'm thinking about? Like I said, sine squared, no, one one about. One plus tan squared is sec squared. Okay, because when you minus the one over, you get tan squared u is sec squared u minus one. So the substitution we're gonna make is x equals sec u. Okay. Now we have to change dx into du, so we're gonna differentiate dx by du. Sec differentiates to sec tan. All right. So, uh, you guys just remember that, okay? I don't need to write every time. So in the denominator, we have the integral, one over x, which is sec u. Now, I'm not gonna write down the whole thing, but we just write it down. Sec squared minus one is tan squared. Then when we root it, we just get tan, okay? Times dx is now sec u, tan u, and this is beautiful, mate. These just cancel. And we're just left with the integral of one du, which is u plus c, okay? Now what's u? u is arc sec x, okay? So this is arc sec x plus c. Well, that'll be this side as well. We'd have arc sec y equals arc sec x plus c. All right, well, we're rearranging for y, so you're gonna do sec on both sides, right? So we're gonna have y is sec of arc, that should say arc, arc sec x plus c. Now what should you be thinking about here? You should be thinking about the addition rules. But the addition rule for sec, it doesn't exist. Well, kind of. We're gonna do one over, right? You do one over cos, but then you'd have to be doing cos of arc sec x. It's just gonna become messy, okay? I don't really like that we're working with arc sec. I would actually prefer to be working with cos, yeah? So, uh, you can go about your working out, get to this point and decide actually, I think I need to backtrack and work with something else. Uh, I understand it now. Okay, so let's backtrack. In the exam, you would just put a cross and uh, start back, but I want to save board space in it. I'm going to go back to this point. Okay. We had that, actually, let me carry on holding this. We had that x equals sec u. From here, we can go back to cos. 1 over x is cos u, right? So we're just reciprocating, which is better because now u is arc cos of 1 over x. Okay, so this is arc cos of 1 over x. So here we would have arc cos of 1 over y. So our expression is now arc cos of 1 over y is arc cos of 1 over x plus c. Okay, that's nice. Well, nicer. <laughs> then we're going to cos both sides. So you have 1 over y is cos of arc cos of 1 over x plus c. Well, we're going to do the addition rules. The addition rule for cos, if you've not seen my video on the addition rules already, I advise you go and check it out. We remember this as the couscous formula. Cos, cos, soin, soin, cos changes the sign in the middle, okay? Now the issue with that is that I'm gonna do cos of this, where the cos and the arc cos are gonna cancel, then cos of c, okay, so cos of c. Cos of an unknown constant is just gonna get absorbed into a new constant, right? But then, 
I'm going to get sine of this and sine of C. But you can't redefine that as a different constant, so it actually gets really messy, okay? That C is a problem, but if you guys might remember, I gave you some critical information here. When y is 2 over root 3, x is 2. We can go back to here and just work out what that c was and we will have no problems. So we'll come back to this later. So let's look at our constant. Arc cos of 1 over y. If y is this, 1 over y is root 3 over 2. So I'm just going to write inverse cos root 3 over 2 is inverse cos of 1 over x, which would be a half plus c. Inverse cos of root 3 over 2 is pi over 6, and that is pi over 3 plus c. So c is uh, minus pi over 6. Okay, so uh, I'm probably going to get rid of this because, or should we keep it? Ah, we'll keep it. I wanted to rewrite, I just wanted to go back to here, but we have 1 over y is cos of arc cos 1 over x minus pi over 6. Okay, so now we're going to use our couscous. We have 1 over y is cos of this, cos of this. Cos of arc cos cancels, we'll have 1 over x times cos of pi over 6. Uh, cos of pi over 6 we just said was root 3 over 2, right? Cos changes the sign, so it become plus sine of this, sine of this. So it'll be sine of arc cos of 1 over x, then sine of pi over 6, which is a half. Okay, so we have all of this. We're going to have to figure out what that is, which is, I guess, another challenging part to this problem. Okay, let's go back over here. It's not as bad as you, you guys think. Though. I've done loads of questions like this on TikTok. If you guys want to check it out, Neil does maths. So, we go back to this. Yeah, 1 over x is cos u. Cos u is 1 over x. Okay? So, the reason we're doing that is u, remember, was arc cos of 1 over x. If you rearrange for u, you would get u equals arc cos of 1 over x. Okay? So, we want to do sine of that. All right? So, just to re-explain, u is arc cos of 1 over x, I want to do sine of that. Okay? So, I have cos u, I want the value of sine u, because sine u is just sine of this, which is this. Okay? So, cos u is 1 over x. What should we be thinking about? We should be thinking about the right angled triangle. So, the angle is u, cos is the adjacent 1, over the hypotenuse x. So the opposite side is x squared minus 1. So what's sine of u? Sine of u is that over x, the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. I remember sine of u was this, I just showed it to you guys. So we are left with 1 over y is root 3 over 2x plus a half or half lots of this. So we plus, when you times that by a half, you get root x squared minus 1 over 2x. And that's great because we can write that all into one fraction. Okay, and there we go. We're going to get our beautiful final answer. You can see here there was a 2x on the top over root 3 plus root x squared minus 1. And that is the solution to our 15 mark question. Yeah, I'm guessing, guys, there was a lot of stuff here that you might have learned today. So if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button and make sure you subscribed for more content like this. I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice one, Mike. <laughs>